Hey everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Copic markers and how to chart them correctly. To start off, let's take a look at this chart. This is the official Copic marker chart that I left a link to in the description below. This chart has all 358 Copic colors, and it arranges them by the color family in columns. The color family of the marker is the one or two letters before the numbers that's written on the marker. For example, for the marker YRO2, the color family would be YR. The O would be the blending group, and then the 2 is the specific value. In case you forget, this is in the bottom right corner of the chart. <laughs> so each individual box on the chart represents one marker color. Most boxes have at least one symbol on it, but some of them have no symbols on it, which is in the bottom right corner. These symbols show which type of marker this color is available in. And some boxes have more than one symbol, meaning that this color is available in more than one style of marker. Every box is available in the sketch markers, which are the oval shaped markers that are the same size as the chow markers. The boxes that have the circle symbol are the boxes that have chow markers available. The chow markers are the same as the sketch markers, they have the same two nibs, but they're a little bit smaller and a little bit cheaper than the sketch ones. And then the boxes that have a little square in the corner are the ones that are available in the original Copic marker, which are square shaped markers. And then the last symbol is the very wide ellipse shape, which is the wide marker. The wide markers are not that common. I think there's only like 36 colors available for them, and I personally don't have any of them. But they only have one nib, and it's a really large chisel tip. And to me, that just doesn't seem very necessary. In addition to every color being available in a sketch marker, every color also has a various ink bottle, which is the name for the refillable ink. So the boxes that have no symbols in it are available in the sketch marker and a various ink. The refillable ink bottles are on the, on the expensive side, but if there's a color that you use very often, it's much better for you to buy the refill instead of buying a whole new marker because in the end it'll save you money, since the refill can refill your marker totally more than once, and it's cheaper than the cost of two markers. I only have one refill bottle, and that's for the marker E50, which is my favorite skin tone, and I use it all the time. So having the refill was much more helpful, and it saves my butt so many times. So now let's talk for a minute about the markers themselves. Why do people like Copic markers so much? And are they really worth this price investment? Well, the first time I've ever used a marker was the end of 2013. For Christmas, my mom got me two sets of, I think, either 12 or 18 markers, something like that. It was two of the smaller sets. And I fell in love instantly. I asked her for these because I saw them all the time on social media, and I thought that using coping markers could make it look like you just printed out a picture from your computer. That's how good I thought they were. Well, they are a little bit tricky to master. In the end, you can make them look even better than printer ink, so I definitely think it was worth it. The two sets I started with were sets of chow markers. The chow markers are a little bit smaller than the sketch markers and the original Copics, and they have the two best nibs in my opinion. The difference between the original Copic markers and sketch and chow markers are the nibs. For anybody who hasn't heard that word many times, the nibs are the tips of the markers on both ends, and Copic markers have removable nibs that can be replaced in case one of them gets damaged. So the original Copic markers have a bullet nib on one end, which is a very fine point, and on the other end they have a chisel nib. The chow markers and the sketch markers have the brush nib instead of the bullet nib, and they both have chisel nibs. I don't usually use the chisel nib, and I don't actually know many people that do use the chisel nib often, but so far everybody that I've talked to has unanimously agreed that the brush nib is the best nib. It's the one that offers the most versatile movement and just the most comfortable to work with. The bullet nib is okay, but between bullet and brush nib, the brush nib is definitely the better choice. Since the bullet nib, it takes a lot longer to cover large areas, and it just doesn't have as much movement as the brush nib. So for any beginners, I definitely recommend getting the chow markers since they're the cheapest and they come in sets. 
once you get maybe a set or two, I would see how you feel about the markers, see if you like the way they are, and then slowly invest in getting more. After my first two sets of chow markers, I got one more set of chow markers that was a skin set that had maybe seven or eight markers in it. After that, I slowly built up my collection by purchasing some individual markers online. For holidays and stuff, I'd ask my parents to buy me as many markers as they're willing to buy, but I'd buy them individually online. Usually buying them online, you can get them much cheaper than in stores, because in certain stores like Hobby Lobby and AC Moore, they're usually around $8 per marker, but online you can find coupons and discounts, and they're just cheaper overall. Especially when you buy them, buy more than one at one time, you usually get a better discount. So, then after you purchase your first few Copic markers, I do think it's a good idea to use a chart like this, or at least do a couple swatches on a diff different piece of paper before you use it on, a on any art projects. The cap marker color is usually pretty accurate to the color that marker actually makes, but I usually like putting it on paper just so I can see to be 100% sure that that's the marker I want to use in my art. For my chart, I printed it out on regular printer paper, which might have been a bit of a mistake, but it's the only thing that I had. It works perfectly fine, the color will still come out the right way. But the only problem is, the Copic markers are alcohol based and they're extremely saturated. So when you have a new color and you put it on a thin piece of paper like this, the color tends to feather out and it feathers outside of the box. As you can see with some of my purples, you can see that the color feathers straight out of the box and I put a little too much down to stay in the box. So while I was coloring these in, I wouldn't put the marker straight to the edge of the box, I'd only keep the color in the center of the box and it would spread out by itself. If you used a heavier piece of paper, which means like a thicker piece of paper because paper is measured in pounds, if you used heavier paper, it wouldn't feather out like this. Because when I do my sketches and my drawings, I usually just use Copic markers in a regular sketchbook. And sketchbooks have a heavier paper weight than printer paper does. And sketchbook paper can typically hold up with Copic markers. Your color won't feather out at all, and all is well. <laughs> I personally believe this chart is really helpful because I also use some other brands of markers like Prismacolor and the Blick Studio markers that are this very, very similar to Copic markers. But those kinds of markers don't have charts like this for me to see what the color looks like. So I took a regular white piece of paper and just made little swatches by myself. But for a chart to already be made, and have specific spots for markers, I think that's a really good idea. And it's definitely very helpful. The only thing with this chart though, is when you're filling in the darker colors, like darker blues, dark, darker purples, even dark reds, you can't really see the marker name that's in the box because you put the color over top of the box. But I mean, if you really need to see what color that was, you could probably just write over it in a white gel pen. And, I mean, you can see it if you kind of squint a lot and get really close to the paper, but it's definitely difficult. Especially for something like the B99, the blue I have. It's a very, very dark gray, black, blue. So, looking at that box, you can't really see B99. But since they're my markers, I know that I have that marker. And just by seeing where it's near, you can pretty much take a guess which marker it is. Although... I'm sure once you have a lot more markers, it will get difficult to tell which marker was which since you can't read it, but for now I think I'm alright. <laughs> Although it may not look like it, I have 63 markers on this chart. I used to have a couple more, but it's markers that I didn't use all that often, and they're very old. There were some from my, from my very first set, and they did run out of ink, and I never bothered to purchase uh, the various ink bottle for it. So I didn't put it on the chart because I have those set aside and I never use them. They're, they're worthless, basically, until I get a refill. And since they're, like I said, they're not colors that I usually use, I'm not going to get a refill anytime soon. So I have them set aside. I do have a couple more. I think I have another green and maybe one more blue. Something like that. It's nothing significant, but anyway. So this is what 63 markers looks like. I'm sure when you look at this chart that I filled out, it doesn't look very complete at all. But... That's 63. And although, of course, I want more markers, it's kind of one of those you want to collect them all thing. Huh. But for when I draw, I think I have an adequate amount of markers. And I never feel like, oh, I'm definitely missing this marker. Sure, I don't always have the perfect match for things that I'm drawing, but I always have something close to the color that I need. So I don't feel like I have an extreme necessity for more markers. 
I think I'm pretty good with 63. I don't really have any complaints. <laughs> So, these were all my markers that I was recharting since I lost my old chart. <laughs> it was a good way to pass some time, and it's definitely going to be very useful. I'm happy that I finally got around to charting it again. And I figured, why not talk about them while I can? <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in more Copic videos, let me know, and I'll get back to you. <laughs> so, thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video.